everyone doing? Uh, today's project is this Craftsman uh, self-propel with a 6.5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. I got this uh, from my neighbor. Uh, he was just getting rid of it and I can understand why. So let me uh, show you where I'm at with this thing and uh, as far as troubleshooting. So first off, a couple of issues that I noticed right off the bat. First of all, there's no brake band cable. It goes up to the handlebars. Uh, that's been snapped off and he's just got a tie wrap uh, on there to kind of hold that uh, on or off, excuse me, all the time. The second thing I noticed uh, was that the self propel handle, there's something going on with that. So that was the second issue. So then I got to trying to test the motor and see uh, if the motor will run. I went through my standard tests, uh, shot some uh, quick start into the uh, intake behind, uh, into the carburetor in, in behind the air filter housing here and pulled it over. That didn't work. I took the spark plug out and uh, put some uh, starter fluid right into the cylinder and that didn't work. Uh, so I checked it for spark, and uh, it had some spark, albeit fairly weak. There was some spark, enough that it should have fired. So uh, we troubleshot fuel, troubleshot spark. Uh, the next two things really are compression and timing. So uh, I just had a hunch that the compression was a little low, so I did a compression test using a basic compression test kit. Uh, that I got off eBay, I think $20, $25, something like that. And uh, I got a compression reading of about 30 PSI. So that is pretty low. Most likely a lawnmower won't start. A lot of these lawnmowers have a compression release uh, system, which makes it easier for you to pull the cord and get it started. Um, but uh, even still, you should be getting compression readings of uh, greater than 30 PSI. So that's where I'm at with it. Um, what I'm going to do next uh, in conjunction with the compression test is something called a leak down test. And uh, you need, unfortunately, you need a special tool for this. Uh, I just got this one off of, uh, once again, eBay or Amazon. I think about $100 to $125 uh, in Canada. And uh, what this does is uh, you actually will hook this up uh, to your spark plug hole where you would put your compression tester and uh, you have to have the engine at top dead center the, sorry the piston at top dead center on the compression stroke of the four stroke cycle now if you don't know what those uh, different strokes are unfortunately well you're gonna have to go look and do a little research and find some videos there's plenty of that on YouTube so what I've done is uh, remove the exhaust and you can see, we'll be able to see inside the exhaust port and right in there, uh, inside that port there, there is a, a valve. It's hard to make out now, but the valve uh, goes back and forth with the engine and that's the exhaust valve. Now, why that's important, uh, it helps me anyways, is that when I'm looking for top dead center on the compression stroke, uh, I know that the uh, fourth stroke is the exhaust stroke, where the exhaust valve opens and lets all the uh, fumes out. Uh, that is, um, during that stroke, the piston is going towards top dead center to push out all the exhaust gases out of this port. Now, uh, the next stroke would be the intake stroke where the exhaust valve closes, the intake valve opens, allows air and fuel into the cylinder, and then the very next stroke is the compression stroke. Okay, so uh, if I can see the exhaust valve opening and closing, then I know where the exhaust stroke is, uh, then the uh, next time that the piston goes uh, on the intake, it will go down. I can usually you can see the, excuse me, you can see the you can see the piston in through this hole. Now the video won't be able to pick it up. 
but I can see the piston um, right now it is at top dead center and uh, but I don't know if that's on the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke because both times the piston is at top dead center so what I'm going to do is while I'm watching this intake valve uh, I'll be able to see the valve move so I'm going to pull the string which should be fairly easy without the spark plug in I'm going to pull that string then I'm going to go ahead and um, watch that exhaust valve when I see it open then I know I'm on the exhaust stroke and then I have to from there switch over to here and uh, watch the piston go down that would be the intake stroke and the next time it comes up uh, that's going to be your compression stroke and I'm going to pull the rope until the piston reaches top dead center on the compression stroke and then I'll be back all right guys so I found uh, top dead center on the compression stroke and I've got my leak down tester set up here so I got a hose coming into the tester all right and one pressure gauge that's going to read the pressure inside of the cylinder then I've got my air hose hooked up from my compressor into this side and I'm going to adjust this to increase the pressure coming uh, into the unit and that's going to go in to the cylinder and if all is well with both uh, valves closed and uh, that uh, inside that cylinder inside the combustion chamber there should be really very little leaks and to test for the leaks you'll be able to see the difference between the pressure in and basically the pressure out or the pressure inside of the, the uh, combustion chamber so all I'm going to do is open this up and start increasing the pressure. Now, if I do have some leaks, I will be able to hear them audibly and exactly tell where they're coming from. So would it be the intake valve, exhaust valve, uh, sometimes the piston rings are bad, and uh, sometimes the head gasket's bad. So already I'm only up to 40 PSI and I'm only reading about 25 PSI. So that's a leak down of about 15 PSI, which is not good. And I can hear it. So 50 gives me 30, barely. 60, a little over 30. So that's definitely got some pretty bad leaks and you can actually hear them so let me show you I don't know if you can hear the difference in the tone so there's definitely some leaking coming out of the exhaust valve so bad valves or valve uh, flash so definitely a leak coming from the head gasket All right, and then if you open the oil t filler tube, a lot, most times there is a little bit of leak past the piston rings. Uh, but this is where you'll... So there is a little bit, I can hear a little bit of air coming out of there, but that's actually probably not bad. So I would say the piston rings are probably good. And our issue is uh, valve lash. Um, so it might need a valve job or at least adjust the valves and definitely a head gasket replacement so uh, this project uh, is among many other projects I have it's springtime here in Canada and uh, lawnmower seasons in full effect so uh, unfortunately this guy's gonna get put on the back burner for now because I have many others that I could probably get going in less time with less work so uh, that's what I'm gonna do but uh, that's just how you go ahead and diagnose um, a uh, low compression uh, lawnmower engine, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out on my channel. And, uh, until next time, guys, take care.